This is not the end of the story here. But I think what's important is what is quantum mechanics telling us? It's indicating, hey, there's some features which are like synchronicity. There are some features which are like non-locality. There are these things which human beings, the experiences that human beings have, which were before totally unexplainable, that we're seeing, hey, wait a minute, maybe quantum mechanics might have something, maybe there's something there. If we just take, maybe we need a new theory, maybe we need something bigger than just quantum mechanics. I think synchronicity is another ordering, is another ordering parameter of the universe. How would you we define synchronicity? We, yeah, define it. Synch synchronicity is when two, it's like almost like, like I just said, it's when two events take place which, in which there is a clear meaning associated with both events occurring, which cannot be explained causally by one event affecting the other. So it's a non-causalistic, meaningful relationship between two or more events. Do you sign the meeting after the events take place? It, I presume you do. It's okay, you, I presume you do. Yeah, it you is very important. Because, because yeah. how can you assign meaning to things if you don't know they're going to occur? You have no yeah. way of predicting them. Uh, I, pl dealing with psychologists and, and hearing their stories, they're filled with remarkable ones, mm -hmm. remarkable sicknesses. But isn't this what my old statistics instructor used to call the golf ball in the fairway fallacy? If you hit a golf ball on the fairway and say, what's the chance it'll hit any blade of grass? Yeah. It's, it's basically zero, but it's going to land on a blade of grass. And yes. If you go afterwards and say, well, look, what's the chance that it would land on that blade of grass? It's, it's very small. But, but in fact, it's got to land somewhere. But is yeah. the negation of that proof in a logical sense that there was no causal connection to no, that event? No, then I would accept that there was something that had to be explained. Right. I mean, something beyond mere chance. Yeah. Right. And, and then you start looking for explanations. <laughs> But the big question is, what does it mean to explain something mm -hmm. like this? See, the problem with explanation today in our scientific way of thinking mm -hmm. is explanation means cause-effect relationship. If we can't fit it into the cause-effect relationship, mm -hmm. we haven't explained it. Yeah. And that is that, I think, is where we're running into problems. Synchronicities are, I'm saying, another form of order, which is mm -hmm. a-causal. Okay. It doesn't fit that model, so we can't we can't explain the yeah. same way we're used to explaining. No, but I'm saying we haven't you, we haven't reached a stage yet where we've established there's something to be explained. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, oh, I, I don't Dave, that. Dave, I in, the, in the development that. of consciousness as a field, how important do you think the subject of quantum mechanics is? For now, in the development of consciousness as a field. We're concentrating on neuroscience. Mm -hmm. We're in the early days. We're connecting neural processes in the brain with processes we know and love in our conscious experience. Maybe 50, 100 years down the track, it's going to be that quantum mechanics or some other part of physics is going to have something really to contribute to the, kind of the underlying fundamentals of the theory. For now, I think it's maybe a little bit early. I, I think it's very dangerous uh, to assign the, uh, the magic bullet of reality to some physical location at our present state of no, knowledge. But it's a good idea to start with what you know for a fact. Now, we know for a fact that our brains are conscious. I thought I knew a lot before the show. All right, well, <laughs> that, that, and I hope you haven't forgotten it. <laughs> I, 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 all of our brains test. are conscious brains. Now, as far as we know anything, this table is not conscious. But there's just as much quantum mechanics in this table as there is in our brains. So if you're going to look for, for consciousness at the level of quantum mechanics, you better start talking about the special features of brain anatomy, because as far as we know, that's the only place that consciousness actually occurs in the actual real world. Tables are not conscious. I want a prediction from everyone. A hundred years from now, what will be the accepted relationship between modern physics and the human mind? Fred. Well, what I would say is that both of these will be seen as approximations to a, a deeper, a deeper reality. Both mind and matter, the separation between mind and matter will be seen art, as, as, as an artifact which, uh, which came about through, through the accident of history. That mind and right. matter will be seen as a deeper, as a deeper mm -hmm. unity. Greg? A hundred years from now, I suspect we will say physics explains the working of the brain, but cannot make detailed predictions about what people are going to do, probably ever. Hopefully this is about 20 novels later, too. I hope so. <laughs> Dave? I don't know. It's possible that in the next 100 years, something really surprising will happen, which will make us look at the whole thing in a new way. More likely, I think, in 100 years, we'll have a bunch of detailed speculative theories, more detailed than we have now, putting forward uh, 
hypotheses about the relation and no consensus as to the answer. John, do you expect some in surprises? A, in a hundred years, I think we will finally have gotten over our traditional vocabulary that says there's the mental and the physical and they're in two different realms. That's already obsolete, just mm -hmm. as it's obsolete to think there's a distinction between machines and other kinds of physical systems. All of that's already obsolete. I think we will then have a biological account of the brain and how it produces consciousness, and that will have about the same re relation to quantum mechanics as any other part of biology is the study of diseases or the study sure. of photosynthesis. Yeah, I think that's right. That We, we will understand the brain in terms of uh, neuroscience, uh, we, in terms of complexity. Uh, quantum mechanics will be what it is today. Uh, it's not going to change very much, and we're still not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> so modern physics has persuaded a few scientists that quantum mechanics engenders mind, and a few others that physical systems can never fully explain mental states. Is consciousness a fundamental essence of existence? Perhaps the real stuff of reality? The theories are fascinating, even if not convincing. But no matter what we find to be the ultimate building block of the universe, it is certain to astonish us. And it's an irrefutable wonder that our minds, whatever they may be, will conceive of it. Astonishment and wonder, that's what transports us closer to truth. I'm Robert Kuhn.